Hi everyone, welcome back to the Cozy Cafe. Today we're going to be painting nails, oh yeah. One of my favorite relaxing hobbies to do when I'm at home. Normally when I'm painting my nails, I will get situated in front of the TV, pop on a movie or a TV show. Recently it's been Grey's Anatomy and paint, paint away. Today I'm gonna bring you guys with me so we can paint our nails together. Or well, you can watch me paint my nails today. It's actually quite weird seeing my nails bare. I do like the way they look, it's very simple, but honestly, there's nothing better than a fresh set of painted nails to make me feel extra confident. So today we're going to get a fresh coat of paint on these nails. So for today, what we're going to do is we're going to go with a classic red color. So this is one of my very faves. This is OPI in the color Big Apple Red. Oops, that's upside down. Take two. <laughs> Big Apple Red. So, this is like, you know, if you are a big fan of red, or red nail polishes to be specific, you'll know that there are many different kinds of red nail polishes. I'm gonna move this to get rid of the glare a little bit, but there are many different shades of red. So some will be more cool leaning, some will be orange, blue, world's your oyster when it comes to red nail polish. This one, I feel like, is very flattering for my personal taste, so this is one I often reach for, and this is like, I think, the second or third bottle I have purchased, so that's to tell you that I am a fan. So we're going to go with the classic red today, and I'm going to show you my little lineup of what I'll be using. So. I've got a base coat from Essie and a clear coat from Sally Hansen Extreme Wear Okay, and I'm going to just place those things off to the side Normally, how I start is I'll file my nails and kind of clean them up a little bit to get them ready for the polish. I have already done that. Thank you very much. So we're going to just start with getting it ready for the actual paint. Very exciting. So first off, I will, I keep my cotton pads in this little container and these are just the raw cotton pads that I get from Muji. So you can see they kind of split up a little bit. I'll take one of these, put the cap back on there, place that off to the side, and I will take pure acetone. And I like to use 100% pure acetone because it gets the job done. Some nail polish removers will just have a lower percentage of acetone and they still work, but they don't work as well. So I tend to opt for 100% pure acetone to help me get the nail polish off. So this is one that I've been using. I typically pick it up from TJ Maxx. I am a TJ Maxx lover. 
spoiler alert, um, and they usually have these for sale there. So I think I picked this one up for, I think, $3.99, $4, which I think is a good deal. So then I will take a little bit of the acetone on my cotton pad. I'm gonna just pop the cap back on there. Then I will take the cotton pad with the acetone on it and then I will do a once over for each nail. And doing this helps remove some of the oils from the surface of your nail, which helps make the polish stick to it a little bit better. So I've noticed that doing this actually makes my nail polish last a lot longer. So I've gotten in the habit of doing that. A little tip for you, in case you wanted to know. So once I've gone in with the acetone, I will go with the base coat next. And this is one by Essie. I really like this one. I feel like it does the job well and the nail polish you put on top of it adheres really well. So this is my second bottle and I'm a loyal fan. I'll keep coming back for more. So I'm just going to place that off to the side over there so we can get some space to work. And I'll go in with one coat of base coat. And I'm not really too picky at all about how perfect the base coat is. Um, it really just gets covered anyways, so it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> how many times can I say perfect in one sentence? The limit does not exist. Then I'll go in with the left hand. I want to make sure you guys can see everything. Okay. Get a little bit more of the base go. Now, I don't know if it's because I've had a lot of practice or, you know, maybe she's born with it. But I'm pretty decent at painting my nails with my non-dominant hand, especially if it's just one color and it's not like a crazy design. Watch me make a mistake and have it be much harder because I said that. <laughs> but I'm hopeful that it'll go well this time. Sometimes when I'm doing a really complicated design, it'll take me forever to do it on my left hand, which I'm right-handed, so that should be the easier hand. Sometimes I'll finish doing the left hand and think, oh my god, I have to do the right, and that takes about twice as long. But it's good practice with your non-dominant hand to get better at using it. Um, so once the base coat is on, I'll go in with the first coat of the red. So I'll dab a little bit off so that I can get just the right amount for the pinky nail. And normally I'll start with the outside going in so that you're not going over the area you painted and then accidentally messing it up. Okay. I usually start by going straight up the middle. I'll go down the sides, getting as close to the edge as I can. Oh, that doesn't look bad. And 
if the cuticle isn't perfect, what I'll normally do is just go in with my other hand and kind of clean it up like that. Normally when I paint my nails one solid color, or specifically this red, I'll do three layers. I feel like that gets the best color payoff with three layers. that's one layer down, one layer down on the left hand, and now we go for the right. Same dealio on this side, starting in the middle, then working on the edge. The cuticle isn't as perfect on this one. That is fine. I'll go in and just do that. That looks good to me. Then moving on to the next finger. Very nice. I need more polish on that one. Beautiful. Okay, and then going in. The middle, and then... Oh, see, I didn't... I need to grab more polish on this one. For those that paint your nails, what's your favorite nail to paint? Mine is the index normally. Um, I also like to paint the thumbnail, more surface area. Thumbnail is definitely fun for when you're doing more complicated designs. I feel like there's more space to get more stuff jammed in there. This looks good to me. Then the thumb. I'm gonna try to get as close to the cuticle as I can without flooding the cuticle, which means like getting all the polish onto your skin. Then voila. Despite my best intentions, I did get a little bit onto the cuticle and my skin. So I'm just going to go in and clean that up. Okay. So first layer is down. Nice. And the 
second layer is when I'll try to cover all the areas that I didn't catch the first time around. And this is also when I'll kind of cap the end. I hear this makes your nails last longer. I think it does, <laughs> she says with a question mark. So I just do it, just in case. Gotta do all the tips to make sure my nails last. Then we're doing the middle nail. I feel like I've always liked painting nails and doing nails. My mom also likes to paint her own nails, so we would have this big bucket of nail polish and nail supplies, and everything would just be tossed in there. It wasn't super organized, <laughs> but we kept everything related to nail polish and nails in that bucket. And we would pull that out whenever we wanted to do our nails and plop down in front of the TV and do our nails together. It was a lot of fun. And then just growing up and like with friends, I would paint their nails too. And I think just doing that and practicing has helped me get better. And recently I've been trying to do more like complicated designs. Um, most of the nails you see in the videos that I do, I do them myself. Um, and oftentimes they're just simple, like classic red. I tend to go for a red pretty often. Um, other times I do like a light baby pink. I've been into that recently. And sometimes I'll do like a crazy design. It's like <laughs> this index finger is coming up so I can stay out of the way. Maybe I'll put it down, looks kind of funny. Honestly, you can do like finger gymnastics to get the paint right. Oops, I'm getting a little on my skin there. Not the end of the world. And I forgot to cap. See, I don't, I, I don't always cap it. It's a new tip that I've sort of picked up. So sometimes I forget. Okay, and now I'm going more on the outside this time instead of straight down the middle. Because I didn't get that outer edge as well last time. Cool cat. Ooh, and this time I remembered to cover it. <laughs> okay, so giving these a little bit of an air dry with the finger flutters. Then we're going to round three. And this is really when I try to just cover up and create that final layer. And make sure we've covered everything we want to cover. I feel like red nails are so classic. Keep having to double dip because I think I might be running out. On to bottle number 
three, or is it four? I forget. <laughs> but I feel like red nails, if you get the shade of red that you like, I think they look good on everybody. And I love the look. Such a classic color. Also, it kind of reminds me of like old Hollywood. I feel like they wore red nails a lot. Okay. I think that looks nice. Then we're gonna do the last layer on the right hand. Just complimenting myself here. <laughs> then the index finger. And finally the thumb. Starting again just on the edge here. So I'm getting it on my skin again. This thumb has been getting all the polish on the skin. <laughs> See, it's like over here, but honestly, I'm okay with that. Because I'll usually, if I'm being 100% honest with you, when I get it on my skin, I sometimes don't clean it up right away. I'll just let my nails dry and then like scratch it off in the shower. But today we can go fancy and I'll take a Q-tip and I'll dip it in acetone. Okay, I just dipped it in acetone. I did it off camera so then I didn't spill it everywhere. <laughs> if you didn't know, acetone will ruin clothing, furniture, especially pure acetone, which has more of that corrosive stuff. Be careful with it. <laughs> Anyways, I'll take it and I'll just clean it up. there's anywhere else over here that could use a little bit of tidying up. Oops. How did you get there? That's good enough. Mm, it's a little bit here from earlier. I can take that off. Okay. That looks nice to me. So then, once I have the layers, oops, I just touched it a little bit. This is actually perfect because great segue into the next and final step, which is clear coat. If for some reason, because we're all human, and we get like little nicks in the polish or it's a little uneven, what have you. Clear coat is the fix. Clear coat will magically make it look way better or even fix the problem completely. <laughs> so I just like nicked it a little bit. I think you can kind of see it right there. What I'll do is I'll kind of like this is a professional tip. <laughs> Super professional. Kind of like squish it a little bit to like make it a little flat. And then once it's kind of good enough, I will go in with the clear coat. Tapping a little bit even though I've got fresh nails. And 
what I'll do is just go in with a nice layer over all my nails. And again, I start from the outside so then I don't accidentally touch it. Okay, I'm going to need a little bit more to cover the other side. It gets like way shinier. Like, wow. seal the deal. I just laughed a little bit at my at my phrase, but oops, a little more clear cut for that one. With clear coat, I actually do a little bit of the opposite of what I do with the colored paint coat. I'll go kind of down the side and then other side and then down the middle. In my experience, I feel like that creates a more even clear coat. I like it when it all just looks like one flat layer versus like distinct brushes. So, I found that doing that technique helps create that. I just had a glob of clear coat on it because it helps it cover the texture. Then I'll just go right and smoothen it out. It's a little too much clear cut, so I'm going to put it back. And then seal the deal yourself laugh is the best. I love finishing painting your nails and then putting a clear coat on top. This one needs a little more. I feel like it just really elevates it. the edge. Oh, and then seal the deal. Forgot that one. Then we have the lovely index finger. All fingers are lovely, thank you very much. And finally, we have the thumb. So, normally with clear coat, um, I feel like specifically with red, You'll notice that the brush kind of turns or picks up a little bit of the polish and turns that color. So, if you see it, it's a little red tinted. So, for that reason, I typically have a clear coat I use for red nail polish and then a clear coat I use for other lighter polishes. Um, not super necessary, I would say, um, but I like to have the separate because I feel like sometimes if you use the clear coat a lot with red nail polish, it can turn the clear coat red. So that's fine for if you have red nail polish and you're using the clear coat for that, but if you're wearing like white nails, might not like it as much. So that's a tip I have. Um, these are also, I think like, I think it's around five dollars. So would recommend. So I think that about does it for the nails today. I think it came out pretty good if I say so myself. We did a good job. So thank you so much for spending your time with me today to paint nails. I know you could be spending your time doing anything, and you're spending it with me, 
and that's really special. So thank you, and I hope you're doing well, and I hope I'll see you next time.